Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Nerd Den here once again and in today's video we are going to be doing a tier list for the latest series of Doctor Who. As I feel like enough times passed now, we've all kind of digested the episodes that were released in full and we're now ready to have a retrospective review on the series as a whole. So... Yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing today. I've done a couple of tier lists already for Doctor Who, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how this ends up. So there were 10 episodes, and uh, yeah, let's just see how we rank them. All right, here we go. So we're going to go from chronological order of episodes. So Spyfall Part 1. Now, to be honest, Spyfall Part 1, I didn't enjoy much as the second one. I'm going to be completely honest there. Just because it started off a little bit slow. Uh, in my opinion. And then things for me got interesting. Once we learned more about Daniel Barton's character. And then we learned that the Master's involved as well. So I'm going to put part one as good. Just because obviously it's setting things up. And then obviously we move on to part two. That I have a lot more to say about this. This really sets up the story arc. For series 12, we have the Master, Gallifrey being destroyed, the Master's TARDIS, there's like loads of things, and it's a crazy episode, and <laughs> to be honest, I'm going to put it as amazing, because part two for me was a really good follow-up, in terms of that, yeah, part one was good, but of course, uh, for me, it just started off a little bit slow, was a little bit all over the place trying to set up the story. But then obviously with the Master being introduced and Sasha Dewan really did an amazing job. So that's why part two is on a higher list than part one. Now we move to Orphan 55. Oh boy. Orphan 55 for me is an episode that I would rather forget. It was a filler episode that just didn't land well with me um the, the the supporting cast some of them were really well um but i feel like the the themes that they're trying to go with the story and then the whole lecture on um at the end still doesn't sit sit well with me today because it was really forced and really out the blue and it, it kind of disappointed me like they could have executed that differently like obviously I have no problem with the real world uh, elements and obviously the doctor delivering a speech but the way it was done just was not that good but uh, for that reason it's gonna go in the okay now Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror this was an episode for me when I first like saw the teasers for it I was just like ah is it going to be any good? But I really enjoyed this. And this is one of my favourite historical episodes. That have been done in Doctor Who. I, like I, I just love the villains. Like the Scorpions. I'm going to put that in the amazing category. Now we move to Fugitive of Jadoon. Of the Jadoon should I say. And I really enjoyed this episode. Like when I watched this. It was one of the episodes, or well, one of the new episodes of Doctor Who, that reminded me of how Doctor Who used to be uh, back when it came back in 2005, and in most of Tenant's era where there was no leaks, and you generally got surprises in the episode, and the way these surprises were brought back, like we had Captain Jack return, we had a new Doctor, things were absolutely surprising for us all, and... I like the way the surprises were executed and it got fans talking and speculating and having loads of theories. That's what I like about Doctor Who and we haven't had that in a while. So Fugitive of the Jadoon, I'm going to have to put as brilliant. Joe Martin was fantastic as Ruth and then becoming the Doctor was amazing. The tonal shift was fantastic. I loved the TARDIS interior. I loved the Jadoon in the episode. I loved the Time Lords. It was such a lore heavy episode. But I, I, I could go on about Fugitive of the Jadoon for ages. But I just love that episode so much. Now the follow-up, Proxus. I'm not... I, I, I think during... Like, when I first watched this episode. 
I was disappointed just because there was a lot of rumours and leaks. Well, I wouldn't call them leaks because they didn't turn out not being true, but it there, there, there was a lot of evidence that uh, the Sea Devils were going to be in this episode, and I was on the edge of my seat thinking that the Sea Devils were going to appear, and they didn't. Like, this would have been the perfect episode for the Sea Devils to come back, but unfortunately, they didn't. But... This episode, after rewatching it, I do appreciate how hectic it was and how well executed the villain was. And it was a really good standalone story, I'm not going to lie. And for me, I'm going to put it as great. Because, yeah, it was great. Now we move to Can You Hear Me. This episode really disappointed me. Just because uh, I was hoping for some, like, very dark moments in this episode. And we didn't really get any. I'm not gonna lie, it felt really disappointing. Uh, like the whole concept of nightmares and it, the, the Sarah Jane Adventures uh, did it better with the Nightmare Man episode and yeah there's not much I can say about this like yeah I'm, I'm just gonna put it as okay. But now we move on to the three-part finale. Now, I know the BBC are officially saying it was a two-parter, but we had the lone Cyberman appear in the haunting of the Villa di Adati. And that episode, oh boy, just the concept of going back to meet Mary Shelley, who wrote one of the best horror novels of all time, Frankenstein, uh, is uh, pretty amazing. But there is... Um, you know, a lot more going on in that episode. And we get the series arc starting to conclude. We see the appearance of the lone Cyberman, reminders of Captain Jack's message, and we get to learn more about the Cyberman's intentions. And I just love that the, the Cybermen inspired Mary Shelley to write Frankenstein. And obviously this Cyberman was brutal and I just loved the, his attitude and the fact that he's half converted, but he's still, you can hear the anger in his voice, and that's what I love about it. He's brutal, but, you know, the fact that he doesn't kill a child, but because the child's ill, and he just wants him to, you know, die from the illness and that. It, it's, it's a really dark episode, and it does a fantastic job of introducing the amazing character known as the Lone Cyberman, so yeah, that's pretty cool. So that, for me, is gonna go brilliant. Now, Ascension of the Cybermen. Oh boy. This episode, I enjoyed the finale as a whole. I know there's some retcons that'll be going on in a bit that does affect them from going into the brilliant uh, tier, but uh, Ascension of the Cybermen was an episode that I really enjoyed so it didn't do the usual elements of the series finales where they start answering questions in the first half but instead it started bringing up new questions for viewers to ask and new mysteries and i felt like that was a little bit confusing as uh, you know there's still some plot threads that need answering and that will presumably be answered in series 13 hopefully but i i did kind of felt like in the brendan scenes Whilst they were mysterious, it kind of took away from the episode with the Cybermen. And I felt like the, you know, the return of the Cybermen could have been executed a little bit better. But, overall, I thought it was a really good episode. I love seeing the return of the 2006 Cybermen. I love the design of the new Cyber Warriors. The music is fantastic. Just from the atmosphere, you can tell that this is like at the end of the Cyber Wars. And you feel really immersed in the story. So, I'm going to put it as amazing. Now, the Timeless Children. Oh boy, the most controversial episode of Modern Who. That's, there you go, I'm just going to say that. Outright, this is one of the most controversial episodes we've had in a while. Because, the not just the Doctor's past, but the, the past of Gallifrey and everything. It's a huge retcon. It's a huge, huge retcon. And whilst I am accepting of what's been changed I would I would have loved to see more explanations and I know that they are saving some stuff for the next series 
However, it for, for something that is a big change as introducing a bunch of previous Doctors, you need to offer further explanations to what's going on. Like, for me, I would have loved to see, and like, a specific amount of Doctors that have that are introduced just because I don't want the doctor to suddenly be a person that's had countless lives like if you're gonna introduce a set amount of doctors introduce like eight lives maybe or you know something like that just introduce a set amount of lives it could be a completely new regeneration cycle so it could be like 13 different lives just something like that you know just try and explain this twist a little bit more and I know that Chibnall wants to save some stuff for series 13 but for me I would like to uh, have more details before the episode ends and yeah uh, I didn't like how the lone Cyberman was just suddenly killed off by the master it was like oh okay I thought they were gonna explain how the lone Cyberman exists but anyway Apart from that, the episode was really good, and as I said, apart from I would have liked further details about the twist, I am excited to see where this goes. I hope, I, I hope that they explain the plot holes that it creates, especially with a few that I'll mention in a later video, because uh, obviously there has been issues in the past where the Doctor thinks that he's dying because he's got no regenerations left but he's immortal, so that's interesting. But Jodie's performance in this episode, she did a fantastic job. The Master as well, played by Sasha Dewan, it was a peak performance from him. He somehow managed to raise the bar from his last performance in Spyfall. He's done a really good job, and I love the design of the Cybermasters. I, I, I felt that was a brilliant twist to, to the Cybermen, and I want to see more of them in future episodes. I feel I feel, I feel like it would be good. Imagine that. You know, having the Cybermasters go into war with, I don't know, the Daleks or another species. That would be insane. But yeah. There you go. I'm going to put that in the amazing category. Just because, apart from the issues with the twist, overall, I thought it was a good episode. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. If you have enjoyed this video, leave a like, rate, and, and Please leave a comment down below in the comment section of how you would rank these episodes because I am very curious because obviously series 12 has been a little bit controversial obviously for uh, reasons that I've just mentioned and uh, it, it, it would be interesting to see how people would rank the episodes of this series. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed, leave a like rating and subscribe and I'll see you all on my next video. Bye for now.